welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Bits. My name is Scott, and today I want to talk to you guys about something that comes up in EV conversations that I have pretty regularly, and it actually came up in my video last week with my dad, and um, that is the process of recycling EV batteries or what happens to an EV battery when they die. Um, depending on who you talk to, EVs could be the greatest environmental breakthrough ever, or they might be considered the next toxic waste disaster. So today I kind of want to cut through the noise and uh, talk about EV battery recycling, second life for these batteries, and what the future holds. Is recycling even happening? Are there companies actually doing this and what the future looks like for these batteries. So come along with me while I educate everybody on EV battery recycling. So first of all, I want to start with the biggest myth of them all. And this is what my dad thought that EV batteries go straight to landfills. Thankfully, that is completely false. These, batter these batteries are incredibly valuable. They contain materials like lithium, nickel, cobalt, copper, aluminum. Those materials are worth thousands of dollars, and no sane company is just going to be tossing that into the trash. So I am happy to report that is completely false. They are not just being thrown away. The next big misconception is that EV batteries just suddenly die. That's something that I've already talked about on this channel before. EV batteries are like your phone. Um, they slowly lose capacity over time. And while, you know, they may drop down to 70 or 80% capacity, and it might not be ideal for your car anymore, they are still far from useless. And that brings me to my second point, which is second life batteries. And that's where I think things get really interesting. So before recycling even comes into the picture, most EV batteries get a second life. That means they are reused in things like grid energy storage, solar power buffering, backup power systems, commercial and industrial energy storage, basically anywhere that you need to store energy but you don't need maximum driving range. Um, so an EV can stop being great for driving long before it stops being useful and good at storing energy. So this can extend the battery's life for years and sometimes even decades. So when I learned that information, I was giddy and I had to call my dad right away. Um, Recycling isn't step one, and oftentimes it's not even step two or three. Uh, that dramatically reduces waste and environmental impact, which was really important to my dad, is really important to my dad and to me, um, which me leads me to my next point, and that's how these batteries are actually recycled. Um, the big question, of course, is, what happens when a battery really is done. Um, and I figured I would just break it down really simply. So first, the battery pack is safely discharged. Safety is a huge deal here. Then the pack is disassembled into modules and cells. If you're a regular viewer of out-of-spec channels, we talk about the modules and cells all the time. Um, those cells are processed and shredded into something called black mass. Now, black mass is basically a powder that contains all of the valuable metals. And from there, recycling companies separate and refine those materials so that they can be used again. Now, from what I've gathered, there are two main recycling methods that you will hear about. The older one is high heat processing, and that melts the materials down. While it does work. Um, it's energy intensive and it's not great at recovering lithium. So there's a newer and more efficient method and that is called, I believe it's called chemical separation. And that allows recyclers to recover about 90 to 95% of 
or more of those valuable materials. Um, that's not theoretical. This is really happening right now. And that, of course, leads me to my next point. And my big question was, OK, if this is really happening right now, who is doing this today? It's not a future promise. There are companies that are doing this at scale today. Um, one of the most well-known is Redwood Materials. That was founded by former Tesla CTO, J.B. Straubel. I really hope that I'm saying that right. Um, their goal is a closed loop system. So old batteries become new batteries. Old battery, new battery, new battery, old battery. And thus continues. There's also Lifecycle. They focus on high recovery chemical recycling. You've got a company called Umicor, and they've been recycling materials for decades. Excuse me. And they're heavily involved in battery materials themselves. And then you've got companies on a massive scale like CATL, who we've worked with at Out of Spec. They're already recycling batteries in China. So thankfully, this isn't an eventually discussion. This is already happening and it is scaling as more EVs hit the road. That made me really hopeful. Um, it was, I was very eager to share that with you guys and with my dad. I read all of your comments, so I knew that this was actually happening. Now, here's where recycling becomes really powerful. I want to talk about recycling versus mining. So mining for these materials is expensive. It's often environmentally damaging, and it's very intensive. Recycling uses far less water, it produces far fewer emissions, and it reduces the need for new mining over time. Now, it's important for me to say we do need a reality check here. Recycling will not fully replace mining yet. Um, I'm a realist. I understand that. And I just want to make that very clear in this video. Every year, as more and more EVs are sold, recycling becomes more effective and more important. So every battery today is hopefully one less battery that we will need to mine tomorrow. And that's a pretty big deal. So what I just said basically is what my dad is concerned about. Um, but there's another point I want to bring up, and that is the economics. And I feel like it's the part that people don't talk about enough. So battery recycling makes financial sense. Um, I'm a business person, so raw materials are expensive, supply chains are fragile, geopolitics do matter. Recycling creates a local supply of materials, which stabilizes pricing and reduces dependence on overseas mining. So that's why automakers and battery companies are investing heavily into recycling, um, not just because it looks good. I'm, I guess I can be a little pessimistic and I thought, oh, they're just doing it for looks, but it's a good financial decision and it does make pretty clear business sense. Um, and then I was reading a little bit more and I had a big question of like, what if an EV is totaled? So a uh, little bit of quick myth busting here. If an EV is totaled in an accident, that does not automatically mean that the battery is destroyed. Often the battery can be reused, repaired, or partially recycled. Shout out to Out of Spec Renew. He does a lot of EV repairs, um, and I'm excited to learn more from him. But as far as the real challenges, I do need to be honest because there are some with anything so first being that recycling infrastructure is still scaling. Transport logistics are complex. Different battery chemistries require different processes. Um, but also, to be honest, none of these are unsolvable problems. We have done this before. I think people get caught in a mindset of like, oh, my gosh, but like we've already done this with catalytic converters and lead acid batteries and electronics. So EV batteries are just the next step in this evolution. So uh, I think the big takeaway from this very short, high-level video is that EV batteries do not necessarily have an end of life at this point. They have a next chapter. 
There's Second Life Energy Storage, High Efficiency Recycling, and Closed Loop Supply Chains. So unlike what my dad thought, this is not a crisis that's waiting to happen. It's a system that's already being built. And as soon as we continue to push more resources towards this, the problem will only get solved quicker. Um, so the next time somebody says, yeah, but what about the batteries? Uh, you now know the answer and you can show them this video. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments. And if there are some more detailed rabbit holes that I could go down, I really enjoyed doing the research for this. And this is the video that I'm going to be sharing with my dad. So he can stop saying that EVs are destroying the environment. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So as always, thank you guys for tuning in and I appreciate every video that you watch, every comment that you leave, and I'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye-bye.